Hi, brother. This is Emmanuel Fernandez with uh, Biblical Science, and today the Lord put on my heart to talk about: Is the Bible really relevant today? I mean, it's a it is a four hundred over four hundred years old book from two thousand years of uh, Greek and Hebrew texts. Is it really relevant? Can I apply it to my life today? So that's what uh, today's video is about. Uh, absolutely you can. Matter of fact, uh, one one being that will agree with me that the Bible is very relevant is the devil because he likes to take a lot from the Bible and call it man's when it's not man's wisdom, it's God's wisdom. And I want to go ahead and prove it with scriptures in the Bible, of course, and quotes of secular people that whether they like it or not, what they're saying is biblical. So, is the Bible relevant today? Yes, it is. It'll be relevant if it was year 3000. It'll be relevant 50,000 years from now or for whatever. Of course, we're not going to go to 50,000 years. We'll almost come to end real soon, but you know what I mean. At any age, the Bible is relevant, the King James Bible. So, that doesn't tell you it's God inspired. I don't know what it is. So, that's what this video is going to be about that. It is relevant. It's tested and proven. It can be applied uh, today. So it's not. I'm just gonna pick scripture and show you how it is tested and proven by science or by life. And I'm also gonna look into some secular quotes from people. Secular means it's not from the Bible, but whether they're knowing or not, those people that that are saying these quotes, the Bible already said it a long time ago. Because uh, one thing that should make your blood boil as a King James Bible believer is when people take from the Bible, they don't give the Bible its due credit. So that's what this video is going to be about. So I'm going to go into my phone here, look up some secular quotes. Secular means non-biblical and say, hey, that's actually from the Bible, whether they know it or not. And then I'm going to actually go to the Bible and uh, look up some quotes that tested and proven that we got it from the Bible whether we know it or not we use it every day so to all you atheists to all you unsaved people you you live by the Bible every day you just don't want to give it its credit and I want to prove it to you just by the way you're thinking that everything you say the Bible is there it's, you you think of it because it's from the Bible but you didn't know it's from the Bible because the devil likes to take it and make, and make it man's that's what the devil likes to do Take stuff from the Bible and say, no, no, it's not from the Bible. It's from man. So let's go ahead and uh, go into my little folder here of quotes. Because I'm like one of those people that like quotes from, you know, wise people. You know, Apple today keeps the doctor away, stuff like that. I like reading those quotes. And it's from reading these quotes and reading the Bible that say, hey, uh, there's a link here. A lot of what he's saying is biblical. Could it, mean, could it be they took it from the Bible and not without even knowing? Uh, I think so. So, let's go. I'm just going to, no, I'm particularly, I'm just improvising off, just picking, looking at, reading at these quotes. What I'm reading is reading quotes. Secular, these are not from the Bible. Quotes of people, you know, you know like this, you know, never let success go to your head, never let fear go to your heart. And, and proven that it's biblical. That uh, yeah, it's proof that Bible is relevant today. So this video is really for the secular and the biblical people because I want to go over secular quotes and say, hey, it is Bible. And then I'm going to go in the Bible and say, this is what the world is belief systems are, whether they know it or not. So because like I say, God's providential. He's biblical and secular truth. Before you get into the biblical, but God's truth is not just in the Bible. That's my point. It's everywhere. That's why you, you are without excuse and you can't run or hide. This is the purpose of this video. A lot of people like to hide. I'll make sure you can't run or hide after you listen to this video. That means if you got the, the backbone, the guts to swallow your pride and watch this video in its entirety. So let me find one. Of course, not all are scriptural, biblical, these these quotes saying some are heretical and I deleted them, of course. Which one are you talking about? Uh, well, any one that says I, you know, you, I will do this, I will try, that, that it is all humanism, 
All those are positive affirmations, affirmations. Those are New Age philosophy. So I deleted those. I'm, I kept only these uh, these secular ones that have to do with scripture that are biblical. Is one by Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, I believe he was a judge of Christ, and I think he's burned in hell just like Martin Luther King. I don't think he is what he used to be, but what you think he is. But that does not mean he doesn't tell the truth. The Bible says in Jeremiah, obey obey uh, the voice of uh, whether it be good or evil obey the voice of the Lord now you can apply that to uh, the 70th week of Daniel because whether you like it or not that's God doing that God saying hey you gonna listen to me now that's what this tribulation period is all about but I can also apply to with these uh, people like David Ike and Jordan Maxwell where they're unsaved, they're going to hell, but that doesn't mean they can't speak real truth. And it's your obligation as a Christian to obey truth, not just to love it. Obey means no matter where it's coming from, you obey it. I'm the type of person that if I'm walking on the side of the street and I see a bum, he's talking truth, I'm going to sit, I'm going to stand there and listen. Now, of course, my sinful flesh will be saying, keep walking, what does he know? But for all I know, he could be an angel. You know, that's what the Bible says. Angels are men you might be already talking to about and you're unaware. So you post obey the obey the Lord, whether it be from good or evil sources, and obey truth. All truth. All means biblical and secular. So no matter who's saying it, if it's true, I want to say it's true. Give respect when respect is due. So here's one by Mahatma Gandhi. The weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the is the attribute of the strong. Is that biblical? Uh, absolutely, you're supposed to forgive, and only strong people forgive. That's a scientific statement and a biblical statement. And I'll I'll get into scripture after I get through these secular. I'm gonna do you know just the secular part first, reading off these quotes, and then I'm gonna go back to scripture and just tie it up at the end. But yes, the because I don't want you just to go by what I'm saying. Yeah, that, the Bible does say that. Uh, it does, but I want to go into scripture later that. Uh, if you, uh, it's a scientific fact, first of all. The, the scientifically, mentally strong people are the ones that forgive. To error, to error it is the saying right here. To error is human, to forgive is divine. A lot of atheists say that. A lot of unsaved people say that. That's from the Bible. That's my point right there. They will take something from the Bible and say it's man's. No, no, that's a saying that we've always been saying. That's been in my you know, culture. No, that's from the Bible. That's biblical. Uh, how are you supposed to have Christ forgive you if you, you can't forgive others? Okay, I was a very weak individual not forgiving other people. Now I forgive. Now, I believe in forgiving and not forget. Well, that means you don't forgive. No, you can forgive and still not forget. The Bible also teaches that. Because I forgive you the way you hurt me doesn't mean I'll let you in back in my life. Get saved and then we'll, then we'll think about it. No, forgive means you don't carry that bitterness in your heart. That you moved on, if you see if you see them, you still say you know what up and all that, but you don't let them back in your life. God, uh, the Bible says, uh, bad company corrupts good manners and separate, separate, separate. Be separate. So the Bible does teach. Yes, forgive, but not that doesn't mean you go be buddies with them again. So that quote by Mahatma Gandhi is really biblical. Again, it's secular though, it's not a Bible believer. I think he's in hell right now. Because I believe he's a Jesuit coadjutor, like Martin Lucifer King, Martin Luther King. Let me see here. Here's a perfect example of ones that are not biblical. Well, maybe it is, but I don't like the word it says one that says, be happy, not because everything is good, but because you see the good side of everything. Good, you see the good side of everything. That is biblical because the Bible says you're supposed to be joyful, take the joy of your salvation, and be upbeat. Uh, is it a sin to be depressed? No. But as a Christian, you do see the good side of everything. You see the good side of people. So that is biblical. I shouldn't even have to point to scripture to prove that to a Bible believer. That's biblical. The only problem I have with the sin is be happy. I don't like that word. I think happy has to do with emotion. I don't care even if it's good emotion. Emotion comes from the sinful flesh. Uh, I don't believe, I mean, yeah, you're supposed to accept your emotions, but don't let it control you. Uh, I don't like happy because happiness is something that has to be restored constantly over and over again for you to be happy. I prefer the term, jo uh, I prefer the term joyful. Joyful is 
uh, happy is man-made happiness. Joyful is godly happiness. I prefer to, have, prefer to have the joy of salvation because no matter how bad I feel, I always have that to pick me up. If you if you go by being happy, what happens when you're not happy? You need to do something to get happy. And that's usually sin. And you have to sin again to get happy. Sin again to get happy. So this quote right here, uh, be happy, I don't like that part, but not because everything's good, you see the good side of everything. That's scripture. No matter how bad everything gets, you have the joy of salvation, you know that God will not put more on you than you can bear it. So there's my point right there. We how the devil takes something biblical and makes it secular. Well, of course, look at the back of the top, uh, the dollar bill. New world order, new novus order secularum. Secularum means secular. The devil wants to take things from the Bible and secularize it and say, no, we don't need the Bible. Look at us. We're, we're good people. When he's stealing the Bible, he's not giving it credit. This is what this video is about. This is what this ministry is about. Give the Bible credit. Give my father the credit. Give Jesus Christ the credit. Fine, you can go to hell and don't accept him. But give him the credit. As Christians, I don't think we're not speaking this high enough. I don't like when they take stuff from Scripture and call it their own. That's stealing, by the way. Okay, you, okay, that's stealing. That's uh, that's something God does not like. Is one that's secular but has the word God, G O D, in it, but a capital G. Disappointments are just God's way of saying, "I got something better." Be patient, live life, have faith. This is not from the Bible. Sure, it sounds like it's from the Bible, and that's my point of making this video. Yes, the Bible says you're supposed to be patient. Patience, long suffering, the fruit of the spirit. Uh, live life, live in serving the Lord, and have faith. That's another fruit of the Spirit. There's one that's scientific, that's also scriptural. Everything in the universe is energy, vibrating. The highest vibration of this energy is love. Continue to raise your vibration, and the more you will feel. Now, as a new age, I can twist this and make it satanic and say, you know, you have the Christ consciousness in you, and Love, love is love, and all that nonsense. That's satanic. No. I have the mind of Christ. Now, I see the walls of God's eyes. I, I put biblical scripture. First of all, you talk about vibration. Well, the 99.9 .9 free space that we call the matrix of all matter, if you watch my previous videos, is vibrational energy. And God spoke everything to existence. Okay, His words is what created everything. Everything you see in my room is God's word. I'm God's word. Uh, God can, I believe he can see me in my pure essence, what I'm saying, like codes in the matrix. Uh, you know what matrix means? Matrix means the, the place where all things are formed. It means the womb, cavity of creation. So Max Planck, which I don't even think he was saved, he said it, not me. He said that this 99.9 .9 free space of which matter consists of is called the matrix of all matter. That is vibrational energy. That's why your words, like my words right now, it's going out to that vibrational energy and it comes back. So what you do say does come back. That's scriptural and it's scientific. So that's very, that what I just said is very biblical and it's very scientific because biblical science is the name of this ministry and they're two sides of the same coin. See, I'm not going to go through all, I'm just going to go through that's plainly biblical. I mean, I got 400 of these. I'm not going through all of them. Uh, so. Here's another one right here. Have a rough, having a rough day? Place your hand over your heart. Feel that? That's called purpose. You're alive for a reason. Don't give up. Don't give up. Yes, of course. Even an unsaved atheist would agree. If he has kids in the family, you have a purpose. The, it's just the difference that a saved person will know better. What is your purpose? Well, to glorify God. Everybody keeps saying, what is the meaning of life? Which I'll go through when I'm going through the Bible, but not now. Right now, it's just secular truth. Because the Bible says, obey all truth. Not biblical, just biblical. Secular as well. But the Bible does teach the meaning of life is to glorify God. That's the meaning of life. And you have all these people, 70, 89 years old, dying with not knowing the meaning of life. They should have read the Bible. Uh, you know, the reason why you put on this earth is to glorify God, to praise Him, to worship Him. Simple as that. So, here's one another one that I like. That's from uh, Cherokee, Cherokee proverb. Hey, there's a there's a book in Bible called Proverbs. Of course, it's a perfect example of a culture 
Take something from the Bible and call it them, their own. A Cherokee proverb? No, I don't think so. Proverbs come from the Bible. Proverbs is the book from the Bible. It's a Cherokee proverb. It says, we all have two wolves inside us. One is evil. It is anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, lies, inferiority, and ego. The other is good, joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. Well, that sounds like the fruit of the Spirit. Which wolf that wins? The one you feed. So it's basically saying we all have two wolves inside us, a good and a bad wolf. The one that wins is when you feed. That is 100% scriptural. Atheists could read this and say, see, we're good people. We don't need the Bible when they took this from the Bible. Uh, good, joy, peace, love. I don't know if you can see it. That's what it says. Take my word for it. That's what it says. You can look up online. Cherokee proverb. Good, love, joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness. That's fruit of the Spirit in Galatians. But the devil takes it and puts it as man law just to prove that man is good. Secular truth, biblical truth turns into secular. I don't like that. Yes, okay, you don't want to accept Jesus Christ, fine, but give credit where credit is due. This is taken from the Bible, obviously. We all have the sinful flesh and the soul. Those are the two wolves that it's talking about. And they are war with each other. A saved person knows what I'm talking about. Unsaved person knows know what I'm talking about. Don't be afraid of change. You may lose something good, but you may gain something better. What is the key uh, sign of someone being saved? A changed life. Change is good, but in the world we're taught change is bad. This guy right here, he's unknown. He clearly disagrees. Like I said, I have a lot. I'm going to keep going. Here's one that's secular but has God in it. A relationship with God is the most important relationship anyone can have. Do I even need to say why that's biblical? Of course it is. I don't care how many kids you have, parents, friends, brethren. The most important relationship you have is God without question. So how, many, how much time do you spend with Him? Do you? I mean, how long do you pray for? Two, three minutes? How long do you read your Bible? I read One day I read my Bible for three and a half hours. I was restraining, didn't eat for two, three hours. I'm not complaining. I praise God. You know, you should be praising God when you're in tribulation, when you suffer. Praise God for my eyes hurt. Praise God for my back hurt. Praise God I'm hungry. Post praise God. That's in the Bible. Praise God in the joy of your tribulation. Praise God when you suffer for his name's sake. Those who suffer with Christ will reign with Christ. So here's a secular one. I say secular because it's not from the Bible, but this is clearly biblical. Here's one that's New Age right here. Like I say, this one I'll probably delete, but I'm glad I didn't delete it because you have to have discernment, try the spirits. This is an evil spirit, but look how nice it sounds. It sounds pretty good. When I accept myself, I am freed from the burden of needing you to accept me. That's from a doctor, Dr. Steve Maraboli. Why do I like don't like that uh, quote? Sounds nice. Well, what's wrong with it? Well, let's keep using the I. I, I, doesn't, doesn't the devil say that in Isaiah? I will, I will, the five I wills. No, this is New Age philosophy right now. So, glad the Lord brought this to my attention. Delete. You gotta use the sermon. You gotta try the spirits. Here's one that is very biblical and scientific. What you attract, you attract what you are, not what you want. If you wanna be great, then be great. That's biblical and scientific. I just told you about this vibration energy, whatever vibration, remember that, your thought is vibrating. Whatever you think you send out, the world comes back. Like I said, I'm in my head right now, okay? When people say you're in your own little world, you know, those sayings, uh, that's a very scientific saying. I am in my own little world, similar to those people in Inception, Leonardo DiCaprio. That ain't, ain't a movie, that's a documentary. You are in your own little world, literally. Okay, we are one conscious uh, experiencing itself subjectively. That's Bill Hicks. That's a scientific, unrefutable, non-debatable, biblical statement. Where is the scientific, where is the biblical scripture? Don't worry about it. I'll get to it later on. Let's see. Yeah, I'm just going to go through all of them. All right, here's another good one. I don't know how long this video will be because, like I said, I have a lot of quotes here. But we'll go as far as I need to. I have to do another part. Here's another one. If you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. But if you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. I'll put scripture right to that right here. Uh, search the Lord with all your heart. 
Never, never quit ceasing. Continually in prayer. Pray without ceasing. Ask God for wisdom. Don't stop. That's all in the Bible. What is in the Bible? Like I said, don't worry about it. Get into the scripture at the end of this video. But that's a scriptural statement right there. There's another one that I like. God created your life and you're in charge. You're in charge to color it, make it beautiful. Yes. Or I kind of disagree. You're more like the, your life is more like uh, clay and he's the potter. Like the Bible says, and you're the work of His dying hand. You have a say in how you, you let Him mold you. You're like you're 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 clay that's alive. If that makes sense, you you have some say in how you want to be molded. But God is the molder. Here's another one. The less you respond, you respond to rude, critical, argumentative people, the more peaceful your life will become. Did I just say a book in the book Proverbs? Uh, to separate, watch the company you keep, and a wise man will attain to wise counsels. And uh, good, bad company corrupts good manners. Here's what it's saying right here: the less you respond to argumentative people and to avoid them. There's another one I like: praying for those that love you is sincerity. Praying for those that hurt you is maturity. Doesn't the Bible say, "Love your enemies, pray for those that persecute you"? Scripture. But it's not from the Bible. This is not the Bible I'm reading from. That's my point. I guarantee there's an atheist that agrees with this, but says the Bible ain't relevant. The Bible is relevant. Because whether he likes it or not, he took this from the Bible. I think this guy is saved because he's talking about praying. Knee mail, as Ken Oven says. There's another one I like. The things we take for granted, someone else is praying for. Doesn't the Bible say be content if you just have uh, clothes on your back and food in your mouth, Timothy? They're saying what you take for granted, which everybody does, including me, or someone's praying for. Someone's praying for food and someone's praying for clothes. Again, not from the Bible, but it is. What I'm doing right now, I'm proving the Bible without reading from the Bible. Why? Because you you're without excuse. God's providential. His truth is permeates all throughout society. It's everywhere. Okay? There's another satanic doc, uh, quote that I'm going to have to delete. Accept how, accept how you feel, but don't let your feelings rule you. You are in control. Uh, let's dissect that. This is discernment in its finest right now. Accept how you feel. Uh, no. Feelings are emotions. That's from the uh, the sinful flesh. Uh, I don't like that term, that word accept. How about know what you're feeling? Yes. It's like I said, do not bottle emotions. I didn't say that. Know what you're feeling. But don't let it rule you. That is biblical. The Bible says those who are emotional are like little kids. You are in control. No, you're not in control. The Holy Ghost is supposed to be in control if you're saved. According to this guy, he's saying you're in control. I assume he's meaning, you know, for unsaved people. No, you're not in control. If you're unsaved, your father's the devil. The lust of the father you would do. You're controlled by the devil. If you're saved, you're controlled by God. There's another one I liked. This one I'm going to keep. <clears throat> Having a soft heart in a cruel world is courage, not weakness. Isaiah says God replaces your heart as stone. With a new heart, made of flesh. Well, that sounds like a soft heart to me. Exactly. I used to thought that people, those, you know, that always say thank you, please, love, were weak. No. Those who don't are the weak. Those that have the courage to, to be upbeat and, and say thank you and act kind of like a fool, but the Bible said don't be sober. But, you know, I'm talking about, you know, just even when things are really bad. They have courage, not weakness, because they know God's protection. Like I said, I'm going to probably make another video. I'm just going to talk about just uh, these sayings. And then I'm going to go to the Bible part two. This is probably, this video right here is probably for second people saying the Bible's not relevant. No. These people that I doubt many of them saved, whether they know it or not, they take it from Scripture. Here's another one. Be realistic. Always wish the impossible. What, what part I don't like about that? Wish. There you go again. Wish. 
That has to do from Arabic with genies. A jinn is a jinn is a genie. Aladdin, a jinn, a jinn is a demon. Whatever you want. Ti says whatever you like. I don't like that word. Wish. Be careful of these words, people. Be careful. But, but the impossible. I like that. It says wish the impossible. God is the impossible for one man. With man, everything is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. So that is scripture. But I don't like wish. Don't like wish. Here's another one. We do not see things as they are. We see things as we are. That is scientific and biblical. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I believe I'm saved when I'm really not. I go by feeling I'm saved. Even though I'm not. But my mind is powerful, which science says it is. You have these people with the placebo effect with these doctors giving them sugar pills and say this medicine will cure you. And they get cured. Why? Because they believe the doctor said it will. With these people with psychomatic, psychosomatic injuries where they're paralyzed in a wheelchair, but they're not really paralyzed. The doctor says they're not paralyzed, but they believe they are, so they are. They won't get off their chair. So that's a scientific and biblical fact. Okay? There's one I like right here. This, this one pertains to this ministry because... Probably no one was going to watch this. That's fine because God is watching this. And what secular saying is this? The size of your audience doesn't matter. Keep up the good work. And I don't know if you can see the picture. It's a picture of a kid playing in front of a little cat. That is biblical. That could be This video could be for me for our kid. I could care less if no one sees this video. God's seeing it and he's proud of it. Okay? That's all that matters. A lot of these people, whether they like it or not, they could be saved, but the Bible warns of being puffed up, so righteous. Look how much views I got on my YouTube there. And they could be preaching truth, but look how much views. I got a thousand views, puffed up. Or the other way around, oh, I got no views. So let me stop right here and delete. No, whether it's a thousand or zero, whatever it is, just make sure it's of the Lord. And it is, because I wasn't even planning about doing this video in the first place. This wasn't pre-planned. But again, it's not my will, it's the will of my Father. Not my will, but your will be done. Just cycle through them. Just know the ones that's very true. Here's another one again. Strong people stand up for themselves. Stronger people stand up for others. As amongst brethren, we're supposed to exhort one another, edify one another. That's absolutely true. That's biblical. The other one is what you think you are, you're manifesting in your reality. Don't don't be only about making love, but being love. God is love. That's in scripture. Scientifically and biblically true. This is a hundred percent Christian, hundred percent biblical. A lot of these uh, Christians nowadays, I don't think they can last one hour alone. Uh, Bible teaches, I, teaches isolation. A lot of these Christians, well, it's nothing wrong with that. You like to be with family, you like to go to your church building, nothing wrong with that. But God, how many, how, I'm spending with God right now because I could be talking to you, but I was recording this video right now. No one's in my room. I'm talking to God literally right now. And the Bible preaches isolation, not to be alone with God. And this, and this guy, Oscar Wilde, which I don't even think he was saved, he's teaching something very scriptural. I think it's very healthy to spend time alone. You need to know you need to know how to be alone and not to be defined by another person. Most of these women and most of these men are defi defined by their husband and wives. Not biblical. Not good. What if God decides to take them? Is your life over? What if God decides to take your wife away from you? Belongs she belongs to him anyways. When I get married, if I get married by the grace of God, she's not gonna define me. Okay, she doesn't. She is. She does. She is flesh of my flesh, bones of my bones. But uh, careful there. Don't covet her. Don't act. Don't tell me a lot of men don't worship their wives and vice versa. Okay, the only thing you should worship is God. Care for these idols. A wife can be an idol. Don't tell me a wife cannot be an idol. Your husband can be an idol. A lot of these women worship their kids. Don't tell me they don't. Their kids can be idols. Oscar Wilde says, "Don't be defined by another person. What defines you? What you do." 
Okay? Hey, th that sounds like something that Batman said. Absolutely. Okay? There you go. Use dis discernment. Yes, I watch movies, Christian. Batman in Batman Begins says, It's not who I am, but what I do that defines me. Oh, you're saying Batman is a Christian? No, but what he said is very Christian-like. We are supposed to are called to be doers of the word, not just hearers. So would, would God agree with Batman there? <laughs> Absolutely. Again, you need to use spiritual discernment. The Holy Ghost will guide you to all truth, TV, wherever. Okay? But use some discernment. I'm not saying, oh, I can watch pornography and find some truth in that. No. Use some common sense. But there are some aspects of TV which have edification. Like Matthew says, gather the wheat and throw the chaff in the unquenchable fire. Eat the meat, spit out the bones. That's all I'm saying. Use some discernment. But what he said, Batman there, yeah. It's not what I am, what I do that defines me. That is a Christian. Who's out there? Who's going to debate me on that? Any Christian? You're supposed to be doers of the world. word. Faith without works is dead. I'm not talking about work salvation. Works don't get you saved. Works are evidence that you are saved. It's after. Oh, here's, here's one that's secular, but it's not really secular because this is a Bible quote. See, I'm telling you, you can't run from God. This is from the Bible. I don't know if you can see Matthew there, but where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Yeah, hey, that's from the Bible. That's because it is from the Bible. Matthew 6.21. It says Matthew right in there. You see the word heart? That is from the Bible. And we use that secularly all the time, but no, God forbid. You can't tell people that's from the Bible. Yes, we're going to go around, you know, it's, it's all about the heart. Heart this, heart that, but God forbid, we can't let people know we got that from the Bible. Let's not give God the credit now. I'm being sarcastic, by the way, but that's what we do. That there is a perfect example of me just going online looking for, you know, uplifting quotes. Here we go, I found a, a, a Bible scripture. What do you know? Bible. This up you can probably read because it's in black. Only dead fish go with the flow. Wide is the gate to destruction, narrow is the way to everlasting life. Wide, spiritually dead people are going there. It's right. When you see think of think of the, the world, the rudiments of the world as a river flowing this way. You're a Christian, you're flowing this way, you're fighting the world, you're fighting the current because uh enemy of the world is friend of God. But everybody that's spiritual dead, spiritually dead, that's going with the world, is going with the flow. And dead fish do go with the flow. That's scientifically proven. See a dead fish, dead fish in the river, where is he going? With the flow? He's going this way. If a fish is alive, spiritually alive, he's going against the current. If you're a Christian, you're supposed to go against the current. If you're unsaved and spiritually dead, you go with the flow. So, absolutely. Dead fish do go with the flow. Spiritually dead do go with the flow. <clears throat> Here's one that I can apply for this video right here. You're probably watching this and saying, this is a waste of time. Yes or no? This says it's, it's, it wasn't a waste of time if you learned something. So if you learn something, even this one little bit thing, well, I didn't know that. It's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of time for me doing this video, even if no one sees it. I could care less. I mean, I'm learning as I'm making this video right now. That is scripture because God says uh, to learn and to ask, seek wisdom from God. How do you seek wisdom? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To depart from evil is understanding, and he will reveal things to you. Look what he revealed to you, that we're living in a simulation. What is scripture for that? Uh, how about... Uh, make me understand the way of thy precepts so I can talk of thy wondrous works. There's the one in Hebrews. Not, not in Hebrew, I think it's Colossians. What you cannot see is temporal, temporary. What you can't see is internal. This vibration, this 99% free space, you can't see it. And that's eternal. That's God's word. My word, my heavens and earth will pass away. My word will never pass away. That's a scientific fact. Okay, the Bible is a science book. Okay, a lot of scientists are Christians. Okay, there's another one I like. Be a be an outcast. Be pleased to walk alone. 
Alice Walker. Well, Alice Walker could be unsaved, but it sounds like she's a Christian from what she just said there. Okay, if you're a Christian, you are an outcast. You're an enemy of the world. She's saying, be an outcast. Be pleased to walk, be walk alone. But this is this is not a scripture verse. This is not a Bible verse. Okay? This is my point. Take something from scripture and make it secular. Secular world order. The devil likes to take stuff from God and say it's his. This is a biblical statement. You're supposed to be an outcast. Here's, here's this guy right here, Paulo, Paulo Coelho. He's describing salvation right here, whether he likes it or not. Knowledge without transformation is not wisdom. Well, what is salvation? It's spiritual regeneration. Well, that sounds like transformation. Yes. Be not conformed to this world, by tra but transformed in the renewal of your minds. The old man is gone, and you become a new creature. Old, old ways are gone, and new has come. Knowledge is just knowing. Knowledge is nothing. Wisdom is the application. Okay, I don't want knowledge. Knowledge is not power. Wisdom is power. Wisdom is putting it together, like Jesuit order. They have a lot of knowledge, but they're putting it in use. How? Well, you're in the Jesuit matrix right now. You think we live, what you're seeing is what you get. You think you live in a real world, and this world's not real. What's the definition of reality? It's, uh, it's definition of reality is you have to observe it for it to be real. Is that real? No. You have, uh, reality should be independent of your observation. You mean like God? Yeah. God is real. I don't have to observe God for him to be real or fake. I don't have to believe in God for him to be real or fake because he, he exists regardless of my observation. But this reality here, like you're looking around my room, I do have to observe it. Downstairs is just a waveform. It's just that 99% free space. As soon as I walk downstairs, I see it. Okay. Oh, that's not scriptural. That's biblical. Okay, don't worry about it. I'll get to that in video part two. Stay tuned. Okay, God does not reveal everything to everybody. That's why we need to fellowship. Am I saying I know everything? No. Okay. Do I, do I know unique things that most people don't know? Absolutely. I don't hear nobody on YouTube saying when it, living in a simulation that are, that is saved other than Chuck Missler. He says we're living in an electric universe. Absolutely. All these that you're looking at are electrical symbols, electrical signals. Okay? Just like Morpheus said to Neo, what is real? If, if you go by what you see by your five senses, then it's just electrical signals interpreted by your brain. That's a scientific statement. That's a biblical statement. Okay? Faith is a substance. Well, it sounds like the Bible's talking about faith is a... Something that you can touch and feel. Well, kind of way it is in the spiritual sense. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, for evidence of things are not seen that we can't see. That's a scientific statement. Sorry if you Christians can't see that, but the Lord, by the grace of God, he, he revealed that to me. And I'm just cycling if this, this guy is saying the same thing I already said from before. I'm just looking up things that I didn't bring up. <clears throat> There's a good one right here by Neil deGrasse Tyson. We spend the first year of a child's life teaching it to walk and talk. The rest of his life to shut up and sit down. There's something wrong there. Absolutely. There's something biblically wrong there. Okay, something that, that the Bible can agree with. Uh, remember, a child is born out of love. We post, we're taught to hate. That's a quote that Nelson Mandela said. He's not saved. He's a Jesuit choir, but... Again, obey truth. What he says is true. He said, we are taught to hate. We're supposed to unlearn all this subliminal programming and and love. Okay, You don't have to teach no one to love. They're already made of a God that is love. You're supposed to be taught to hate. Here's one that is secular, but she's talking about God. And it's a woman praying. Always pray to have eyes that see the best in people, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that never loses faith in God. The Bible's not relevant. Are you kidding me? She's if she, she she didn't. If this woman, whoever said this, was not reading the Bible, how how did they get this? Someone must have read the Bible for her to know this. Okay, don't forget the devil knows the Bible better than you. He's he's in it. He's one of the main characters besides God. For the spiritual growth. You need time, but the waking consciousness is now. Remember I told you time is illusion? 
Time is uh, relative. Time can be accessed uh, anytime you want. There's no such thing as past and future. It is always the now. And there is scriptural evidence to back that up. Okay? Time is just an illusion. For spiritual growth, you can grow anytime you want. Jesus Christ says, my time has come, but your time is always ready. You can be saved at any time you want. Okay, ask God that you're a sinner, come into a repentant safe and be saved at any time. But his mercy has limits. There's one that's very biblical. People talk about free will. Free will. Do you have a free will? Well, to me, you have a will. I don't think it's free. Okay? What's free is your salvation. That's free. But even that comes at a cost because to serve the Lord comes at a cost. So do I believe you have a free will? No. Yes or no? You have a will. You have a will. Free means you can do whatever you want have no consequences. If, if, if I'm God, I can do whatever I want. What, what, what am I going to do myself? Send myself to hell? Condemn myself? No. The only one that really has a free will is God. Okay? I have a will. Okay? And I know if I sin right now, yeah, I can do it. God can't stop me. But if I do, I'll be punished for it. That's my point. Okay? If you agree with me, then yes, I can agree with your thing. Free will. I don't like that term free. It's not free. You have a will. Even if, when you're saved, you, it's still not free. You have the, uh, power. You're just not a, a slave to sin. You're dead to sin, alive to, alive in Christ. But you still have a will, but it's not free. You still, If it was free, God wouldn't punish you. Then I can do whatever I want, no punishment. Whatever I want, yeah, go ahead. Watch your pornography. God won't punish you. Even in the afterlife, in the judgment seat, He won't punish you for no sin. Yes, if that's, that's the case, you do have a free will. No, you have a will. And this, this saying is saying you are free to choose, but you're not free from the consequence of choice. Absolutely. That's my point. Uh, Ayn Rand, she said, you can, ignore, you can ignore reality, but you cannot ignore the consequences of reality. What are consequences are you talking about? The 70th week of Daniel, when God pours the wrath on the world. That's the consequences. There's one that we're guilty of. Everybody's guilty of this. This is a prayer you, everyone should pray. It's a prayer, but it's not complete because he doesn't say in Jesus' name. But it says, Dear God, thanks for this beautiful life and forgive me if I don't love it enough. We all take things for granted. We're all very hypocritical. That's a prayer. Everybody should pray right there. But again, that's a prayer, but it's not from the Bible. Remember I told you you can't run from God? It's not from the Bible. Technically, it's not from the Bible, but really it is. That's my point. Technically, it's not. Why? Because it's not scripture. It was a chapter and verse, but it is from the Bible. You can't run from the Bible. But yet we do. You can't run from, you can't run from the truth. The truth being what? Jesus Christ, yes. But truth in general, but we still do. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. There's one by Aristotle. The educated mind is one that would be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Doesn't the Bible say, hold every thought captive to the, unto the obedience of Jesus Christ? Pure thought life? Here's Aristotle right here saying that. This is before, yeah, he was around before the Bible. Why? Truth is eternal. Okay? Truth is everywhere. Okay? Bible, TV, it's everywhere. If you just try the spirits. There's one by Mark Twain. Whenever you find yourself on the majority, you need it's time to pause and reflect. Absolutely. You're not supposed to be on the side of the majority. You're supposed to be on the side of the minority. Okay? The Bible teaches a uh, uh, friend of the world is enemy of God. Well, what's the majority? The world. Love not the world. He who loves the, the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Let's keep going here. Freedom is awesome. What's freedom? Liberty from being saved? Absolutely. The fact that I can stop this video right now and watch some TV and as long as it's some edification there, that I have the liberty from God and I'm not going to let no Christian tell us, you know, watch TV and be all legalistic. I have liberty. That's freedom. That's true freedom. So if you're saved and you're following Christ and obeying the, the God's Father's will, you're truly free. If you're unsaved, you're not free. Don't you know IRS can come in your house and take everything you want? 
Big one. Why? Because you're a corporation with an all caps name. You know that? He who is surety will sell smart for it. They'll make merchandise of you. You're a corporation. Don't you know you don't own nothing? That's a scientific and a legally accurate statement. The only thing you own is your salvation and the blessed hope. I don't own nothing. Really, this is all of God's. But the IRS can come and take everything. Good. Good. If it makes me come close to God, I will. They can go ahead. I don't own it anyways. I'm talking from a legal aspect. I'm not getting into that. You figure it out on your own. Ask God for wisdom and understanding. There's a New Age statement. You can ask the universe for all the signs you want, but ultimately, we see what we want to see when we're ready to see it. That's all well and good, but replace universe with God, because God is not the universe. That's New Age philosophy. God created the universe, and he became the universe, and you are the universe. No, you're not God. I do believe you're the universe, though. God created the universe. You are the universe because don't you know what your body's made of? The universe is made of too. The universe is 99.9 .9 free space. You're 99.9 .9 free space. The sun is made out of hydrogen, nitrogen, and carbon. What do you know? You're made out of the same thing. And the earth is made out of that. You're made out of the same thing. You are the universe. Where one single consciousness of observing itself separately. It's kind of like God does. Hmm. God's one God, but he, he experiences himself in three distinct things. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, man's the same way. He's all one consciousness, but he's separate too. Remember, in, when Adam sinned, we all sinned. That's why God holds us accountable. Okay? That you accept Jesus Christ, but God sees you responsible for killing his son. And I already made a video about that, so I'm not going into that. There's nothing in this world that can trouble you as much as your own thoughts. Absolutely. Thoughts are everything. Thoughts create your reality. That's a scientific, biblical statement. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Thoughts do control your world. That's why people say change your thoughts, change your change your world. But who's changing those thoughts? So that's the only problem I have with that. Is it the devil or God? Well, if you're saved, God is your, the one that's feeding your the thoughts into your head. If it's the devil, then it's the, the devil f uh, feeding the negative thoughts in your head. Uh, to sh show me someone that's walking in God and walking in truth. I'll show you someone that has a pure thought life and a clear conscience, with the, which the Bible teaches. The best is yet to come. Boy, it depends. If I'm unsaved, the worst is yet to come. The 70 week of Daniel's coming. But if, if I am saved, which I am, the best is yet to come, no matter how bad the world gets. The rapture's coming, which I don't call it the rapture. That's Jesuitism. That's a Jesuit term. I call it what the Bible calls it, the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. The best is yet to come. Again, joy joy versus happiness. No matter how bad I'm feeling, I have the joy that I'm saved. <clears throat> the quieter you become, the more you hear. Communion with God. You hear any noise in this room? It's very quiet, besides my voice. That's an accurate scientific statement. The quieter you become, the more you hear. Carl Jung, where he's unsaved, yeah, he's a Satanist and all that, but he says something that's biblical. The man that looks outside, outside dreams. The man that looks inside awakens. That's half true. Because what the perspective he's talking about, he's talking about man becoming God, humanism. No. I'm talking about baptismal regeneration because the Holy Ghost is within you. If you look inside your heart, only if you're saved, that is true. You awaken. Salvation is you being awakened to who you really are. Like when Neil got shot in that uh, uh, hallway, the old died. And then he woke up, and then he saw the wolves for what it is. That's the natural him. Okay? That part of the matrix is salvation right there. He had to get shot, die. You have to be crucified with the flesh. Swallow that pride. Accept you're a sinner. And then when he got up, he was a different person. Well, actually, he's not a different person. He was the same person. He just woke up. I'll stop when it's an hour. And then we'll go into Scripture, how, how Scripture 
has secular sayings that we took from the Bible that we don't give the Bible credit. That's part two. But this is just secular sayings that are scriptural. Part two is stuff from scripture that we think is secular. Okay? This is video is about things that are secular, that's really biblical. Part two are biblical scripture that you think is secular, but it's really biblical. It'll make sense when I make the part two. Don't worry about it. Here's one right here. Secular, but it's not really. It's a scripture verse. Better is a poor man who walks in integrity than a rich man who is crooked in his ways. You know, the poor, the poor you are, you read the Bible more. That's a scientific fact. That's from this is from Proverbs twenty eight six. It's getting ahead of me right now. So you see what I'm talking about? I said I'm making a video about scripture from the Bible. <laughs> I'm talking about scripture right now. This is scripture right here. See what I'm saying? Can't run from God, atheist. Sorry, he's a consuming fire. You're playing with hellfire. Sometimes you fall down because there's something down there you're supposed to find. Can that be interpreted as biblical? Absolutely. You're supposed to be in a broken, repentant state. God's supposed to grind you. Okay, God, I can't. I give up. I'm tired of running from the truth. I need Christ to come into my life and save me. That's me falling down. Why? God has to grind you, break you, so you realize you're a sinner. And then you realize you're a sinner and then you need Jesus Christ and you go to hell. Let's keep going here. I said I got a lot. Let's go all the way to the end. Let's go to the ones I really like. Oh, this goes the ones that I just know in my head because that a lot. There's one that has a picture of a phoenix. Phoenix is the Antichrist. Oh, it's Satan, so you shouldn't read it. No. Eat the meat, spit out the bones. It has a picture of a phoenix, but it says sometimes you have to die a little inside in order to become a stronger and a stronger and wiser version of you. That's not salvation, what is? That's a secular statement which you can look up. That's salvation. There's another quote from Bill Hicks. I strongly recommend looking at Bill Hicks' quotes. He's probably not saved, but he talks a lot about the Bible. Not about the Bible, but a lot of scriptural things that are biblical. So I just end with this. Next next video will be in the Bible. As if I need to, I just prove to you how the Bible is very, very relevant. Okay? It's a 2,000 year old book written 400 years ago, but I can still use it today. I could still use it today if it was the year 3000, year 4000. It's still tested and proven and it's scientific. But anyone that don't think so, even after watching this video, then stay tuned. I'll make the second one and prove it to you, as if I need to prove it to you. But I like, don't like people taking scripture, stuff from the scripture and say it's theirs. And these scientists, these heretics, these phys physicists saying this and that about reality. And they don't believe in God, and they don't believe what they're saying is scriptural. Like I saw a documentary about this guy saying, you know, yeah, he believes what I'm saying. We're in a simulation, but he's an atheist. What? You believe we're in a simulation, but you're still an atheist? Do you know how stupid you sound? Well, God did say we destroy the wisdom of the wise. If you believe you're in a, in a simulation, this is an electric universe right here. That's not evidence for God. I don't know what is. I'm sorry. But stay tuned for the next video. How... There are things in the secular world that are taken from Scripture, but the devil doesn't want you to know. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Peace.